Crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another holiday card set. This time my inspiration was two different things. There is a winter slash fall coffee lovers blog hop that's happening right now as well as a caring hearts card drive. So I wanted to kind of combine these two ideas and I picked out the Newton's Nook Designs Cup of Cocoa stamp set and I picked out a stitched circle that I could fit over all the images. There are eight different cups in the stamp set and so I cut eight stitched circles and then I stamped one of each cup inside. So that way they would all be a little bit different and a bit more interesting to color, but I could create eight different cards, slightly different cards. There's gonna be a lot of similarities into them, of course. I have cut also with the stitched scallop rectangles from Cat Scrappiness, a piece of perfectly plaid winter paper from Lawn Fawn. And another thing that I was trying to do is basically kind of use up a few Christmas items I had on hand. So this is an old Cosmo Cricut piece of pattern paper that was a 12 by 12. I used to do a lot more scrapbooking, so I still have some 12 by 12 papers and I just don't use them very often. I kind of have to like make a point too. So I pulled those out and one 12 by 12 piece of paper could get six backgrounds. So I'm going to use, I'm making eight cards. I'm going to use that same pattern paper for six of them. And then I'm gonna go back to the Lawn Fawn Perfectly Plaid to pull out the last two bits of the background pattern paper. These are all A2 size cards. So they are five and a half by four and a quarter. And my piece of pattern paper that for the background is four by five and a quarter. That pattern paper that I chose from Cosmo Cricut matched most of the patterns pretty well, but I, for the last two, I did went, did go with a pretty solid red or well, they're plaid, but like, you know, not a lot of extra colors to go with the last few die cut rectangles that didn't quite fit. One of the reasons that I picked the die cut rectangles actually was because I had already cut some and I found it in the Ziploc bag that I kept my Lawn Fawn pattern paper in. So I, again, was just trying to kind of use up things that were around my craft room. I'm going to stamp the same sentiment for all of them. I had these leftover strips of red pattern paper, or sorry, red cardstock as well. I'm stamping them with Versamark ink, and then I'm going to add white heat embossing over them. A lot of times I don't bother to do that little extra step with the sentiment and do the like heat embossing. But here, because I knew I was going to make eight sentiment strips, I thought it made it a little bit more worth it because I could stamp them all at once and emboss them all at once and use the heat gun one time, yet still get that little extra something for this card. As you can see, I keep my heat, uh, my embossing powder in a sandwich container just because it makes it a little bit easier to pour over a card. I only do that with a few colors but I also only kind of use a few colors of embossing powder. Definitely recommend when doing sentiments to use your embossing powder bag. It makes a big difference. I think I still wound up with like one little fleck of powder in the wrong spot for the most part though, that really gets it the job done. I'm going to stamp the sentiment twice on each of these strips and then I'm going to cut it down. Normally I'd cut it into a banner, but I wanted to go with something a little bit different and maybe a bit more simple because part of my inspiration was donating these to the Caring Hearts car drive, which I will link in the video description. It, we're coming up on the deadline, but they did extend the deadline a bit and so you might have a few cards on hand that you would like to donate, so I will include that. But um, they will be donating to seniors and obviously there'll be men and women, so I would like my cards not to always be overly feminine because sometimes I have a tendency to do that. And I thought these cards were very gender neutral. And so I'm gonna do like a really simple straight cut on one side and then a diagonal cut on an another side to uh, create these little sentiment strips. And then I'll put those all to the side because I've created them all at the same time. And they'll be ready to adhere once I have all my images colored. I'm not gonna color every single image on camera 
just because coloring the cups is a pretty simple thing to do, but you can see what a final card will look like. I am going to show coloring, I think, of two different cups just to talk about some quick Copic tips that you might want to use when coloring these. First off, I am using the, I'm thinking ahead about which pattern paper each cup image is going to go on, and then I'm going to pull out colors of Copics that match it. Um, this means that I'll have like quite a few different color combos going, like I might have some reds and greens for some, and then blues and greens for another, but I am also trying to keep it simple and a little bit quicker, so once I've picked out a blue that matches the lawn fawn paper, every time I want blue, I'll be able to just use that same blue color combination. And in fact, it's, I guess it's technically a teal because I am using the BGs. BG 53 and 57 is the blues that I chose. And basically what I'm going to do is I want to make the cups look rounded. That's the only shading that I want to do on any of these. And in order to make the cups look round, I'm going to put my darkest color on the edges and my highlight down the center. You could put your highlight off to one side but the main key to give it that rounded effect is going to be to make sure that your shadows are on each edge. I'm using G16 and G12 for the greens. I, am, I pulled out a slightly lighter green than I might have if I were just trying to match the lawn fawn, and that's because I was trying to go all the way to the lightness of the green that was in the Cosmo Cricut paper that I pulled out for the background sheet. For the handles, I am also just putting the shadows at the edge of the cup, again, just to keep it simple. And the G16 and G12 are not the easiest to blend. They're a little far apart. So if you find that um, you have two markers that don't quite blend as quickly as you'd like, one thing you can do is touch the tip of the markers to each other and then you won't have to quite work it as much because the G12 and the G16 will blend a little bit on the tip, but it won't create any issues with using your markers. Like it won't, G16 won't forever be in your G12. Also, I did find it helpful to go back and add just the tiniest line of my deep shadow at the edges of the cup and then not blend it out. I find that I tend to overblend my shadows a little bit more than I intend to, and so that's one way that I can sort of compensate. I mean, obviously I could also, I'm, something I need to work on is not overblending my shadows, but when you're only using two colors, it's kind of hard. So that's just one little sort of cheaty way I have to fix that. A lot of the images from the Cup of Cocoa stamp set do include whipped cream because they're supposed to be cocoa cups. And so for those, I just came in with a C1 marker. For all of my reds, I used R35 and 37. And I did decide that all of the images would just be cocoa in the cup. So I didn't color any on camera that had the actual like liquid showing in the cup. A lot of them had the whipped cream or other details. And that's the thing that's really fun about this set is that some of the cups have great detail, some of them are simple, so you can choose which ones that you would like. But in terms of the cocoa, I just picked like one color of um, brown and I just colored all of the, the cups with that. Again, just to kind of save some time. And the reds, you also want to be a little bit careful with, especially on tiny images like this, red Copics do tend to bleed outside the lines a bit more than some other colors. But your colorless blender can usually save the day like it did for me there. I am going to pop up all of the cup images just to give the card, again, a tiny bit more interest because I know these are pretty clean and simple cards. And I'm just using a double layer of cardstock instead of foam tape, but of course foam tape would get the job done there too. This is a Newton's Nook set, so there is a cup that has Newton on there, which is, you know, one of my favorite things about Newton's Nook is there's always those cute little cats sort of scattered throughout. I also popped up my sentiments. And here you can see how I'm quickly finishing up two cards, but they're all going to be done that way. The card you saw earlier 
also done that way. And it's just a just an idea for how you can create a bunch of cards for something like a card drive where you would like to contribute a few, but still make each one kind of fun and unique. So that's it for me today. I will have links in the video description to the Coffee Lovers blog hop that I mentioned, as well as to the card drive that I mentioned in case you're interested in checking either of those out and to the products that I used, of course. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.